By the end of World War I, it was becoming very clear to the British and the UK governments and the French governments, the victors, that petroleum was much more than what it started out as. It started out as a replacement for whale oil, for lighting, kerosene. But over the turn of the century, it started to be used for transportation, to power ships, to power planes, to power tanks, and for transportation uses. And so the US and the UK governments started to treat it as a strategic commodity after World War I. For many decades, the first part of the century, last century, um, the West thrived on cheap energy. And initially, the supplies for that cheap energy came from the West. Coal fields and then oil fields were discovered. But increasingly, the appetite for energy in the West outpaced our own supplies of energy. And so we started to look elsewhere. And first we looked to the Middle East, which became a huge supplier of, of oil. And then partly as a result of the Middle East getting precarious, which was to some extent because of that oil, um, we diversified supplies uh, into Africa. In the past, when we've had big increases in demand for oil, such as in the OECD world after World War II, so this is the 1950s and the 1960s when cars, roads, plastics were developing, we also had a large increase in supply. Even when OPEC tried to control the market and raise prices, we saw a supply of oil grow in countries outside of OPEC, Alaska, North Sea, Russia, etc. This time that isn't happening. The United States has certainly built alliances around a desire to have stable, affordable oil, particularly uh, from the Middle East. Uh, and that has consequences that now go well beyond oil. Even if we were to reverse U.S. dependence on oil, we would still have all sorts of lingering challenges in the Middle East in particular.